What do you think, Anna? There's not a whole lot of dew in the grass that needs to be mowed. Look, a softball. <laughs> The dew in the grass in the mornings is one of the scientific measurements that we use to try to figure out how early the soybeans are gonna go for the day. A heavy dew generally means that we're gonna need to wait a little while because the soybean pods took on moisture overnight. So we need the sun and the wind to dry them up before, before they'll shell out good and harvest nicely. And obviously a lighter dew means that we can probably go a lot earlier, especially when the weather is like this, which is awesome. Morning, Cat. Cat and Anna are buddies now. Okay, sounds good. I'll get the second one fired up here. Alan's just leaving with the first one. All right, bye. That one doesn't look right. That one is not right. That's the purpose of the hammer in the mornings. You got a low one. Do we? Yeah, really low. Uh, outside, right rear on the truck. Okay. Yeah, that and I know there's an inside far right rear on one of the trailers that we got to keep an eye on. Okay. Jim and I took it off and covered it in soapy water and never found anything, so we put it back on. That's possible or standard. Right. Could be the rim, too, inside the rim somewhere. Or a valve stem. I don't, yeah, we couldn't find anything. Dad's gonna take that truck to town and get that dumped and then meet me out at the field. And I am gonna take Thunder. You stay out of trouble now, Anna. Have a good day. Morning, ladies. Morning. Dad said the air conditioning wasn't working real well in the 9870, so we're gonna get the air compressor, the air compressor out here, and at least blow out the coolers and see if that helps anything. That's not very dirty. None of them are. Kinda doubt that's the issue. But I guess it doesn't hurt anything anyway. And the second machine, which takes the government juice here, as Brian would say. For some reason, nozzle keeps clicking out, so I'm gonna stand here and babysit it, because that's a part of running death. I think what happens is this death, when it dries out, it, it gets crusty, like it's corrosive, like nitrogen is. And then it gets in these handles. They gotta clean themselves out, or you gotta soak them in water, hot water, or something, I don't know. Somebody got some advice for me? Besides delete the emissions, you guys, that's illegal. These actually look like some pretty decent beans, which they should be. This all kind of lays low, lays flat, stays wet underneath. There's a little bit of tile underneath it. I haven't actually heard what they were running last night, but they should be pretty good. Check the header for broken, worn sections and guards. That's a morning routine every year during soybeans. Got one. Oh boy, oh boy. There we go. We do not have an impact width or a 15 millimeter socket. New, shiny, sharp. You 
can chuck that in the back of that dually. Five to four, I got the 9870 running. Um, I'll go put that in whatever has room left in it, then the little bit that's in here. I'd assume you want us to strike out and try it. He's loading a truck. Concentrating. That isn't good. Uh, and we don't have enough traction on the gravel to pull that forward or backwards from what it sounds like. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. This approach isn't quite wide enough to turn south on. Um, that's, uh, we're gonna try and back up here. He said he's stuck and I can see his tracks, so I'm assuming he's stuck and it won't back up. But Dad's gonna get in it just in case something were to happen here. Because those frames will twist and bad stuff can happen. It's, it's loaded up, so. I don't think it would ever pull forward out of that. Yeah, and I don't know what we could pull on to try and come backward with it. We could hook the cart tractor to something and pull backwards would probably, I don't think it'd take a whole lot. We got a short chain here that was in the back of the dually, but we don't have any tow ropes with because well, we haven't seen mud in like two years, so we don't have a good rope with, but we got a short chain and it's five miles home, so we'll try that before we run home and get a rope. I don't think it's gonna take a lot to pull that. The problem is you pull in the wrong spot and you can either wreck something on the trailer or worse, that trailer will tip, twist and tip its way into the ditch. Meanwhile, we're blocking the road and so far we've rerouted two people. So it isn't quite like blocking Interstate 94 through Minneapolis, but there's a couple people that want to get by. Dad says no, we're not gonna hook up to the cart. So I'm gonna empty the cart, we're gonna hook up to the tractor. Alan's on his way home to get a rope, an actual rope, because this chain's, who knows? I don't know, we're, uh, we're just kind of chasing our tails. So that's fun. set my IVT here for I don't know very very slow how low can I go I don't really need the flashers on half a mile an hour less 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 okay we'll go I would say you can try it real slow I've got it in reverse got my IVT set to 0.7, which seems too fast, but doesn't want to let me go less than that. You just tell me what to do. I got it lower. Okay, chain's getting close to tight. Close to tight. We are tight, and I'm creeping real slow. It's moving. Seems like it's moving. We're moving. I'm gonna speed up just a hair. The tires are dragging, or the... We're moving, oh, hang on, stop. Uh, I wonder if I should get realigned here. You were coming at me faster than I could speed up. Fine. I think we were stepping on each other there. Were you saying that you're fine now or you want me to realign? You must think he's fine. Yeah, you can go ahead and try it. It looks fine from here. You're going to have to turn that truck soon. Keep coming. You can keep it coming. Keep it coming. It's going to start coming up in the back. There you go. It's coming back. Your truck, you got plenty of room on the right side anyway to use. 
Clear behind me? Clear behind you. Clear behind you. I think so too. Still clear behind me? Yep, you got 100 feet yet before you get to the 9870. Okay, pulling onto the road. 10-4. Well, that was exciting. We can't even give Jim grief for it because he's not here this morning yet. Did you tell Alan we won't put it on the internet? No, I didn't tell him that. I figured he would no matter what. So yeah, we just tell him so he feels better for a couple days. You can tell him I won't. I'll let him know. All right, well now, now we'll start combining. It's more a comfort thing. Six mile per hour, Jason. On a 40 footer. 40 feet of soybeans. Is that, uh, is that common? Is that normal? Yeah. Or just with the John Deere's probably. Just with the John Deere's. Yeah, much. I'd imagine so. <laughs> we finished up the south piece of this field. Dad's gonna finish up the north piece. He's probably only got 20 acres left back there. So Jason and I are gonna load up the honeybee here on a cart that he pulled over with his truck. And then we're gonna head back north, it's about 10, 12 miles right now, this is our farthest south piece. So we go right by the farm halfway to our farthest north piece. And once dad's done back there, that farthest north piece is about 250 acres. That'll be it for our soybeans for the year. So then he kind of wiggles the cart by hand. And then there's a strap system underneath there somehow. He connects those straps. And then it's got a crank on it and he actually cranks and lifts the dolly itself up into the bottom of the header. Pretty, pretty handy really. I am all unhooked. I'm going to leave dad here to finish up the last few acres here while I get on my way there. He's got Alan running trucks and Jim running cart. Jason's going to grab that honeybee header and meet me at that field. It's going to be a little bit of a drive because like I say, this is our farthest south field and I'm headed to our farthest north. So it's about 12 miles, maybe 14 by road. Long combine drives, they're not like walks on the beach. They're just, they're not that enjoyable. Nobody puts that in their profile that that's what they like to do. So I'm going to get this drive done and then I'll be back with some more farming content right after a quick message here from my lovely wife, Rebecca. Harvest is in full swing here in our farm, which means I'm on my own for mostly all things on the honeydew list. Join me as I take on the adventure of removing this 20-year-old speaker from our patio to replace it with a new security system camera. The Simply Safe You Know and Love, who we've been partnered with for a while now, has big news. They're introducing their new wireless outdoor security camera. It has advanced security features and joins the Simply Safe system as a new unit for defense when it comes to protecting your home from the outside in. Simply Safe is an easy to use home security system that we've been using in our home for over a year. The outdoor camera is something we've been looking forward to. The wireless outdoor security camera features an ultra wide 140 degree field of view so you can keep watch over your entire yard or in my case our kids while they're enjoying the swimming pool. It has a 1080p HD resolution with an 8x zoom along with a built in spotlight with color night vision so you can bust your friends when they try to take a dip in your hot tub while you're away. It also has a two way audio so you can yell at your kids when they're out of line. As you can see, it's super simple to set up in just minutes. With the versatile magnetic base allowing you to get just the right angle, and it has an easy to remove rechargeable battery so it doesn't need an outlet, and can go anywhere on your property. As always, the Simply Safe interactive monitoring service will call the police if it's alerted to anything. Their team of always on professionals are easily reachable and always keep lines of communication open for the protective service. Take 20% off your Simply Safe security system and your first month is free when you sign up for the interactive monitoring service. Visit simplysafe.com backslash millennial farmer. 
I'd also like to take this time to wish everyone a safe harvest. Please remember to always use the right tool for the job. Slow down and take a minute to be aware of your entire crew's location. Know where your children are. If you feel fatigued, park the equipment for the night. Practice grain bin, PTO, and auger safety. If you're following farm equipment on the road, slow down, be patient, and wait to safely pass farm equipment. Wow, that was perfect timing. Thanks, Becky. We're back to the farming. I am just about to back in towards this field here. Jason's coming with the header behind me. We're gonna hook that up and get back to work. Should be plenty of room in there now, Alan. I'll take off, take some more ends off here. What did you do, Jason? I think your dad did it, actually. Oh, you're gonna blame it on dad? <laughs> He's not here, right? I suppose we could pick on him. <laughs> so usually that sticks in there, but it looks like it's a little bit. jumped out here and we're waiting on another empty truck he uh, he had to run Jim and Alan down actually to the last field to get a truck so I've got a minute here to tell you guys what I really think about this honeybee header while Jason is gone it's doing a dang nice job it definitely took some setting up it's got a control box in the cab where we can control the air pressure the airbags here that's what kind of adjusts the rigidity or how much flexibility that front cutter bar has once we got that set and we tinkered around with the feeder house. We've got to get the right feeder house angle on this because the header sits so flat. Um, so it's, it's quite a bit different that way. The 9870 here does not have the power feeder house tilt. So we actually had to go in there and, and turn that with wrenches a few times and adjust that. But now that it's sitting flatter and we got things set right, we got the air set right, it's doing a really nice job. I'm combining 45 to 50 bushel beans right here, which is by far our best field of soybeans here. And I can do five and a half, six miles an hour, and it's not a problem. Honestly, I could, I, I'm just not comfortable at six miles an hour. But the header, the combine, we can do it. I just, there's a lot going on at that speed. You can definitely see how well it's cutting right here. And it, it even does better than this. It's got definitely a lot more flex. Once you get the air pressure figured out where you want it, it does a really nice job. I was a little bit unsure of the big pan or that stainless steel I guess I call it the pan. Before the, before the crop gets from the cutter bar to the belt, there's a wide area there. It's really weird when I pick up on the ends, I'm still not used to it. It drops like a foot down, and you can't really see the cutter bar from in the cab when it does that. But that's part of what really allows the flex when you go through the draws at five, five and a half miles an hour. It follows the ground pretty well. And the lower you have the air pressure, the more it follows the ground. But you've gotta have dry ground in order to do that, like we have here. That way it doesn't start pushing in spots and pushing up the mud. So at night when you're running, if the ground starts getting tougher, the moisture comes up and you get some dew down there, you can turn that pressure up inside the cap and put a little more rigidity into the header and it helps you run a little bit longer that way. I will definitely say though, I do miss the prairie wind system that we've got on the deer header. The deer header does a really nice job too. You know, everything's got its good and its bad, but I do like that wind system a lot. I think that would add a lot to this header as well. Um, you can't change the draper belt speed on this head, but it doesn't seem to matter. It doesn't seem like you really need to. Kind of like the deer head, once we get it set, we really don't mess with it much. It's got its own air compressor over on, I believe it's on the other side, but anyway, we wired it in, just connected it right to the battery and zip tied the line here, ran a box up into the cab for a couple days here. You can also adjust the tilt right here. There's a cylinder there on top of the feeder house so you can adjust that tilt, but you still gotta be pretty close with your feeder house tilt in order to make sure everything is right. It's a good product. I honestly, I wouldn't shy away from it at all. It, it seems like a pretty solid header. Oh man, it's a delivery. Mountain Dew Express. Mountain Dew Express. That's where you're drinking. It's been about five hours since I last turned the camera on, which is a good thing. That means it's been very uneventful, just how we like it. Dad and I are getting pretty close together here. We've had Jim running back and forth and Alan going to town, so I don't think we'll get this field finished tonight. 
Uh, Jason wants his header back. He's going to take this thing and head south again, so we'll be down to one machine. But we aren't going to have a whole lot left here to finish up tomorrow. I mean, things things are just going good. And when it goes good, I don't have a whole lot to show you guys, and that's good. <laughs> following dad right now in the other combine with the other header on it. We're going through a draw right here. And we're going to compare the stubble from the two heads at upper force 4.7, 4.8 miles per hour. See what that looks like. Dad actually ran this machine all day yesterday and really liked this header. He told me I should run that one tomorrow and see what I think after running this one for a while. Just, uh, just to compare, because it's easier once you go when you go back and forth, you know. But I'm looking at his stubble over there and just kind of eyeballing it, and that's definitely there's some some longer stubble there. I mean, I think he's still catching all the soybeans, but this one is getting right down onto the ground. I'm pretty impressed looking at that. It took some dialing in, but once we got it figured out here, I, it's working really nicely. I'm catching him. I made him go around the tile, it looks like. Hi, Mrs. M. Effer. Hi. What do you got? Um, dinner, and then the neighbor, I don't know, Reese is his last name, he brought you these drinks. Oh. They're tea with honey sweet. Nice. Yeah. Old pork, apple slices, and like eight grapes. I think she's trying to tell me something. I'll eat the fruit, Becky. I still like the pork sandwich better. I tried to catch that on camera, it would have been sweet, but this camera's too slow. this time of night. The beeps, you get used to them, but I can do without them. Five to seven, I am empty, and that looks heavy. Hey Jason, um, when I get to the north end here, which is gonna be in a couple of minutes, oh, I see you running through the beans now. How, how many miles have you put on those boots this week? You enjoy running around fields, huh? <laughs> Streaking, oh no. <laughs> No, none of, that. none of that. I wouldn't pick you up there. <laughs> One cool thing about this header is that it's actually got its own rock trap built right into the header right there. So we're going to drop that. Look at that. You see any? Obviously we got a rock trap on the back of the feeder house in the combine, but I didn't realize any heads had their own rock trap built into them. I don't think they do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Speaking of the rock trap on the combine. No rocks. That's a good thing. I'll maybe take off. Are you okay with that? Yep. Okay. Because we're going to have to get his power cord off here and everything. Okay. This is one of them fancy paved roads. The yard is dark when we're doing soybeans and hauling them to town. Kind of weird coming home at harvest without the uh, all the city lights on. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Hi. Hey, 